question. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, good teaching is about asking the right questions and helping people ask questions and uh, helping people understand that it's, it's a good thing to ask questions, mm -hmm. it's not scary, mm -hmm. and it's okay to entertain questions that might be uncomfortable or answers that might be uncomfortable because I think that's really how we learn and we're pushed to think in different ways. Uh -huh. Welcome to Great Bible Teacher Interviews. I'm Rick Jordan, President of Great Bible Teachers, and each week I have the opportunity to have a conversation with a scholar or author or practitioner. We talk about the Bible or biblical interpretation or spiritual formation. Today, I'm very pleased to be able to have a conversation with Dr. Scott Ryan. Scott and I have known each other a very long time, and it's been a joy to watch his career progress as he was an undergraduate student at Gardner-Webb University in North Carolina, and then received a couple of master's degrees at Duke Divinity School in Durham, and then went to Baylor University where he received his PhD. While he was at P Baylor, he received an award for his dissertation, as, as outstanding dissertation, and he also received an award as the outstanding student instructor. After receiving his PhD, moved to Orangeburg, South Carolina, where he is now assistant professor of religion and biblical studies at Claflin University in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Our conversation took place in Fort Worth, Texas at a conference that we were both attending. So now, here is Dr. Scott Ryan. The, we're called Great Bible Teachers. Right. So um, who has been someone who's been a great Bible teacher to you, who has influenced your life? Yeah. Well, so I recently finished with my PhD in, in Biblical Studies and specifically New Testament. And my journey really goes back to Bible study in the, in the local church. Mm. Uh, when I first started following Christ, I was in a small Baptist church and um, there was a person there who was a youth leader. He was a mm -hmm. lay leader in our mm -hmm. congregation. Mm -hmm. He eventually went on to seminary and to become a pastor, but at the time he was just a, a lay teacher. And um, he worked, especially on Wednesday nights with the youth group, and we, we literally just read the text. Mm. Um, we did some other things, but we would uh, sit down and we would go through different texts, and, and the thing that was so influential for me was that he allowed us to ask questions. Mm. Um, and I was a new Christian. I was excited, zealous, uh, the epitome of zeal without knowledge. <laughs> and so, um, it, so, so I had lots of questions and even questions about the text. And I think that it was that experience that in many ways set me on this journey. Mm. Um, and the idea of asking questions, interrogating the text in, mm. a, in a good way, mm -hmm. you know. Um, <clears throat> is something that has shaped my educational journey and even my own teaching, mm -hmm. whether it be in the church or in the classroom in higher education. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, good teaching is about asking the right questions and helping people ask questions and uh, helping people understand that it's, it's a good thing to ask questions, mm -hmm. it's not scary, mm -hmm. and it's okay to entertain questions that might be uncomfortable or answers that might be uncomfortable because I think that's really how we learn and we're pushed to think in different ways. Uh -huh. so, so that's where it all started. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I, I, was, uh, I had the good fortune of having many good teachers, both in the church and in my um, uh, college and, and divinity school and, 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 and in my PhD program. Um, one that comes to mind is immediately is Ellen Davis, who is a mm -hmm. professor of Old Testament at Duke Divinity School. Mm -hmm. So Old Testament is not my primary field. Uh, but I had the introductory Old Testament course with her, and now I teach Old Testament. Mm. And so I find that my reading and my, the way I approach the, the Old Testament especially is shaped in so many ways by her. Mm. And the thing about it is she is a very learned scholar. Um, she's brilliant, but in the classroom, really what she was doing was just reading the text. Mm. Um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say just, mm -hmm. uh, but she was reading the text. She was reading it carefully and slowly and asking questions like, why is this word here? Or, um, you know, why does the author say it in this way? Mm -hmm. 
And one of the things that, uh, that I picked up from her that has really shaped me as well is the idea that um, the authors of the text that became the canon, the biblical canon, uh, this topic, um, the topic of, of God and, and, and Jesus Christ, was extremely important to them. And so they wrote and composed those texts with great care. Hmm. <clears throat> so I approach every text that I come to in the biblical text as um, a well-crafted document. Hmm. And so I want to look at the shape of that document and, and see what is the author trying to communicate both to an original audience and to us who are far removed from that, from that audience in that context. Um, and so I think that um, that's where it gets us into asking questions of the text. Why does the author use this word? Why does the author say it this way? Uh, how might the ancient audience hear this kind of text? Mm -hmm. um, those are the kinds of questions that I think um, can be really valuable and that, that come from the great teachers that I've had. Mm -hmm. And so actually, you have followed along that path, yeah. and uh, and even your studies, <coughs> excuse me, as I understand it, are related in great deal about how does a 21st century Christian, in our context, mm -hmm. understand what's happened yeah. in the original writing uh, mm -hmm. of that? So, uh, how, talk to us about yeah. that. Yeah, well, it's something that I deal with from day one when I'm in the classroom. And one of the things that I come across is that um, people um, don't always have a good idea of the ancient context, what it was really like, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the struggles that people faced. The, the worldview, the way that they thought about things. Um, and that's not, you know, we shouldn't expect everybody to know those things. You have to study to learn those things. Yeah. But I think one thing that uh, teachers can do is, is when they're approaching a Bible study is to, to think and, and do some reading and learn about what that context was like. <clears throat> because the ancient worldview is very different from ours mm -hmm. today in the 21st century. So I think an understanding of that ancient context is a way in to uh, really understanding what that author was about mm -hmm. and how the audience might have heard and received that text. Mm -hmm. So just for example, um, I've done some work on um, the remains of Pompeii, hmm. which is uh, a, a city that was destroyed by volcanic ash mm -hmm. in the year 79 of, of the Common Era. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not pristine, it's not, uh, it's not, the culture is not preserved um, totally intact but it's the closest thing we have to the first century context in which Jesus lived and Paul wrote. Um, and so uh, I think that, uh, so I, I've done some work studying that and then comparing that to the Pauline letters. And uh, understanding that, you know, the people, uh, most of them um, lived at this sort, sort of subsistence level. Mm. Uh, many of them were, were pretty poor, moderate to poor. Uh, the idea that, um, uh, they thought that the world was inhabited by spirits and, and things that could shift life for good or for bad. Um, and so, so that, that's a different kind of framework because I don't mm -hmm. think that we actually think in those kinds of terms these days. Mm -hmm. And so understanding that context can help us understand what's going on in, in, in the text. So when Paul talks about uh, sin and death in Romans 5 to 8, or when Jesus talks about casting out spirits, you know, people thought that these things were real and could inhabit their their lives, uh, so it gives us a new understanding on the text. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I think is important is, is understanding the context from which you read, mm -hmm. so us in the 21st century. Um, you know, people often say, well, I just read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, no one ever just reads the Bible. <laughs> yeah. uh, all of us have, uh, are influenced by our context, the way we were brought up, um, the values that were instilled in us by our parents and our wider culture. Um, the church traditions from which we've come, the theological commitments of those traditions. And so, you know, Baptists like to talk about, um, you know, just the text, mm -hmm. but even that's a tradition, mm -hmm. that's a tradition. Mm -hmm. And so uh, all of us are influenced in some way by our upbringing and the context, the position from which we read. We all have a lens through which we read. And so I think it's important to try to be transparent about, okay, what is it about me and my context that, that um, sort of points me in the direction that I'm reading? Mm. Um, 
And the beauty, I think, of Bible study, uh, small groups and Sunday school classes and things like that in the local church is hopefully there's at least a, a little bit of diversity of opinion in the class, mm, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, because it could be that the person sitting next to you, um, well, it, I shouldn't say could be, it is the case, the person sitting next to you has not had the same experience as you have. Right. And those differences of, of opinion, um, sorry, experience is what I should say, uh, lead to a difference of opinion. Mm -hmm lead to a different way of understanding and reading the text. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, that's really the beauty is that you can create an environment in which people can ask questions, maybe even different kinds of questions, and come to different conclusions about the text. Mm. So I think that um, a focus on context, both the ancient one and um, a, um, a, conscious, a consciousness about the context from which we read, uh, can help us be what I like to call um, sympathetic readers. Mm -hmm. Um, in the sense that uh, we don't just immediately write off someone's conclusion, even if it may be quite different from our own, uh, but to understand that, you know, people can read the Bible from a different position, a different context, and maybe come to different conclusions, and that's, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's what makes the church beautiful. It's what makes it uh, diverse, mm -hmm. and we need to listen to those diverse, um, those diverse opinions and ideas. So going back to Ellen Davis, I'll just say one more thing about context, mm -hmm. and that is um, she, uh, she may have picked it up from someone else and, and reused it, but I always credit her with it because that's where I heard it. But she used to talk about uh, reading with historically conditioned imaginations. Mm. Historically conditioned imaginations. And what she means is we have to, as best we can, put ourselves in the shoes of the people, the original audience, mm -hmm. right? and try to think of, okay, within this context, what's going on? Uh, how do the values within this context, how does the text that we're reading, the biblical text, uh, either challenge or confirm some of those values? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, you know, we can never really get at it mm -hmm. completely, but it's a way forward to think about the context from which we read and the context of the original audience. Mm -hmm. Because things were so different mm -hmm. politically, <coughs> economically, uh, as you say, spiritual understandings mm -hmm. of, of things. Um, so our audience is basically laypersons. They're probably, mm -hmm. they may take an online course or something maybe uh, that would help them with that. But what, what suggestions would you offer to someone who's, um, you know, they're, they're, yeah. they're not gonna go get their uh, ministry degree, uh, mm -hmm. but they're very, interested in learning yeah. about context. Yeah, so uh, I would say um, one place to start would be a good commentary on mm -hmm. the text. Mm -hmm. And I you could probably just ask uh, your pastor or mm -hmm. other teachers in your church about what are um, uh, scholars who have written commentaries that are accessible. Uh, and th there's some good series out there like the New Interpreter's Bible commentary. Um, uh, the interpretation series commentary I think is really good. It's, it's mainly geared towards uh, well, it's geared towards preachers, but mm -hmm. more, you know, connecting the text with a, a, the, the audience mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the pew every Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be a good place to start. Um, there's also a site that is um, fairly new, but it's, um, it's a site that's operated by the Society of Biblical Literature, mm -hmm. SBL, which is the, uh, the professional society of which Bible scholars are a part. Mm -hmm. And it's called Bible Odyssey. And um, they've enlisted scholars within the field to write on a variety of different topics, whether it be specific texts or topics. You know, you can, you can it's, it's got a search um, feature and you can search keywords and things like that and bring up different articles. They're very succinct. Um, it, you know, maybe 10 to 15 minutes of reading mm -hmm. tops. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's, it's, the thing I really like about it is it's, it's an accessible way for those in the guild who have been trained professionally to, to read ancient context, understand mm -hmm. ancient context, mm -hmm. to try to connect that with, with lay audiences or, um, or, or preachers and, and, and teachers. Yeah. So th I think those are two places maybe to start. Great. I'd like to thank Scott Ryan for joining us for this interview on Great Bible Teachers. A couple of takeaways for me. Questions are important. It's good that we invite our students to ask questions. It is by the asking of questions and then the struggling through those questions that we will all learn more. And then secondly, no one just reads the Bible. 
we all come to the Bible with our own cultural lens. And it is important for us to recall and learn about the cultural lens of the original readers and writers of the text. And we can do that through commentaries, Bible dictionaries. These types of tools are available to us these days very easily. And so we should take advantage of the resources that we have so that we can be better interpreters of the Bible. Thank you for joining us again today. I hope you'll join us again next week and every week. Please sign up for our email. With the email, you will receive two emails a week. One is a blog article, and one is an announcement of the upcoming speaker interview person that we'll be having that week. Thanks again for joining us. 